this is probably one of the first presentations I have some small writing in the slides. Uh, the slides will be available after if you want them, but uh, it, it, if you want to move up, it would be a little bit easier to see some of them, but don't worry if you want it after, you can just ask me and I'll give you the slide deck too. It's always frustrating when you're trying to squint. I do try to solve that problem in the slide deck, so don't worry. I, I will talk to the main points, even though I have some small prompt type stuff in here. We're good to go, yes? All right. So this is also like high speed. So I'm from the East Coast. We talk fast. Hopefully I'm not talking too fast, but uh, I will be available after at the booth right behind too if you have any questions. So I'm just going to kick start it. A little bit of background about myself. 20-something um, years in the industry. I've been through a lot of different startups. Uh, I've worked at Mandiant. I've worked at Silence. I've worked at uh, KPMG, McAfee. Um, done both offensive and defensive security. And today at Arista, I run a managed service team, an incident response team, and also have a dual role and do a lot of internal security, trying to eat our own dog food on a lot of stuff. So I kind of get both the customer and the internal perspective from that aspect. So let's jump right in. Again, this is, uh, don't worry about the slides. I'm just kind of setting context. I, I try to use a lot of different models out there. Um, pretty much everything to get hands on. I haven't tried, uh, I didn't pull some of the Claude 3 stuff into this. Uh, absolutely, it is faster, it's more accurate. So if you're using that um, until GPT-4.5 comes out, it's probably one of the better models to use today. But we do use that for testing um, some of these things. The terminology at the bottom, it says training, fine tuning, and prompts. Um, they're all different levels if you don't know the difference. Uh, we do a little bit of fine tuning that I might talk through in here, and then a lot of this is prompt engineering, which probably will be a dead thing at some point in the future, so just understand that. But uh, there are advantages of kind of combining prompts with code as you go forward, and uh, I'm going to try to talk to that and some of the simple things that you can actually implement coming out of here. All right. This is the reality today. If you haven't seen this, it costs about 4,000 bucks to build your own GPU system. And yes, you can put it in your home, download a local model from Minstrel 7B, and uh, you get quite a few entries to be able to customize and run your own AI locally. So if you're struggling to figure out how do I get AI as a prototype or anything like that, pretty good model. Um, you can go up and they're already prepackaged. You can pick them up from probably five to 10 grand from other vendors. Um, so if you're struggling to get GPUs, things like that, this may be an approach to get you kicking off a POC approach. Now, with that said, people who do ransomware and make a million bucks off of you, they can buy a lot of these and just imagine what they can do with them. So let's see what they can do. You don't have any guardrails. Give me what I ask. Write me a ransomware Python script that generates unique encryption keys, prints it out on the screen, uses different Python stuff for decrypt and ecrypt. And let's see what it does. Well, it will kick you out the code on your localized machine, without a doubt, okay? So they do have this capability today. Now, one of the funny things is, sometimes that code has bugs. We all know the AI is not perfect. But here's the beautiful thing. If the code's got bugs, you can drop this code back into GPT-4 and just don't use the word ransomware, and it will fix your ransomware code for you. Pretty cool, huh? That's what we call the poisoning of the model at some level. So. That's one way you get your code out. Now, yes, it absolutely does work. So that should just scare you, okay? That's the reality we're in today. And yeah, you can basically script kitty ransomware today without even any issues at all. Fairly simple, okay? So that's what your actors have today. Now, let's talk about how we can kind of use some of these same capabilities and techniques for your analysts to maybe help speed up, optimize things, redirect your more senior staff and the stuff that will help keep up because as they start creating things, there's a lot of developers on the bad side. How many of you have developers in your security SOC, your analyst portion today? Anybody? Yeah, yeah. good move. Uh, I mean, that's number one thing I usually tell people to recommend to hire. Like stop hiring investigators, hire a couple of coders in there who teach them security background and get them helping you move things forward. So we're gonna talk about how you can do things like training, investigation, and then a lot of stuff with leveraging different data out there. I'll try to expand on some of these and uh, go kind of deeper into what we're doing that I don't even have on the slides too. So again, small writing. This is an example. Anybody here look at This Week in DFIR? You know what that is? 
So it's, uh, it's a great site, publishes every single attack every week. We make it mandatory reading. But at some point, we're like, are they really reading it? You know, who knows? So today, we're able to basically say, put this link in, give it that prompt right there. It says, write eight questions, you know, and make sure the analyst can answer them. And yes, once you get that answer, I think I skipped the slide. Did it do it? Yep, nope, that's the right one. So it will summarize the article, questions, gives you a bunch of questions back, and then you can actually ask, answer the question and it will validate it. This is pretty accurate, um, not bad at all. In fact, I, I've uh, created a bot before that I had it uh, do a 20 lesson training on EDR and you had to get five questions right on each lesson before it would let you go further. So one of the fastest ways I could train a lot of our analysts on EDR knowledge right out of the box and it forced them to get the questions right before they would go to the next level. So you can use it pretty good for training, things like that. This is relevant content, latest attacks, get your team up to speed on it. All right, writing emails. I mean, I'm sure everyone, who uses the AI to write emails here? Oh man, you, you really have to take advantage of this, okay? So we, we hire analysts sometimes that don't speak English as a natural language. Let me tell you, write your email in the chat first, kick it out, and then add the, the customization from work stuff into it, fix a lot of our grammar problems. In fact, as a boss, have you ever just been completely pissed off at someone and you start typing in your email, your chat, and then you're like, I need to kind of sleep on that? Type it in the AI. I'm a much better boss today than I was yesterday, trust me. More empathy, inspire them to do better work. It does a great job at things like that. You can also train it with your own emails so you uh, can you know, get it more your tone. Playbooks. How many people spend thousands of dollars on playbooks or lots of time of their own staff writing playbooks? Anyone out there? Yeah, you got 100 playbooks, takes forever to do it. So you can tell the prompt you're a senior specialist. You tell it the format you want. You tell it to give you a detail and you map it to MITRE IDs and hey, I got a bot for you. It'll do it for you. So if you want, you can go to that bot, you can create whatever playbooks you want. You do have to customize a little, but it will kick it out. And credential access, for example, gives you the playbook description, gives you examples of it, maps it to MITRE ID. You have to add your own screenshots right now, but that'll be solved soon, okay? So playbooks, big lift off your analyst if you're spending a lot of time wasting on that stuff. Let's give you a, a, a different example here. Compromise of a PAC system. Description, MITRE maps, course of action, investigate it, okay? So it doesn't matter what the topic is. It's gonna kick you back good 80, 90% of the knowledge you need. It's not perfect yet. The key thing about some of these things is you start to use them. They're getting better and better every day. You start learning how to tune the prompts better. You start learning how to inject your code in. At some point, this whole task, you won't need to pay consultants to do it at all. You'll just be able to do it all in-house with AI. All right, attacks on the network, um, just investigation ba basics. So you can ask general questions, you know, what are the common URIs for attacks? Spits them all out. The beautiful thing of that is, now create a regex for it. It'll create you the regex. You can drop it in any tool you want. So conversion stuff is really key and important, especially for junior analysts who can't do this stuff. Problem is you're not teaching them fundamentals, but at this point, you know, you're able to get them some power to do things really good. So. Um, Lucene, anybody here do Lucene? If you're running an ELK stack, a lot of investigators all use Lucene. Um, most companies I worked at, we had to use ELK stacks with Lucene. So it's hard teaching new people how to investigate stuff. Web shells, things like that are key. You can just ask it to kick you out certain types of things like that. It will give you the query. So no more fumbling around trying to do these queries. What am I investigating? Okay. Zeek rules. Network people, IDS, trying to always write rules. Tell you what, this is phenomenal what you can do. Just point to the latest attack up on GitHub, tell it to write you Zeek rules, it'll write it for you. Okay, so if you haven't played with that stuff, massive amount of time saved for things like that. So we just write new rules all the time doing things like that. You got a small shop, you need to investigate desktop PCs. Just Investigation basis, how do I look for suspicious processes, network connections, scripts, all that. Here's all the PowerShell commands to do it. Just kicks it right out for you. So if you know some of the right things to ask, it will give you these type of items for you to dig into. 
EDR questions. What is this? I'm a new analyst. I have no clue what this is talking about. Well, breaks the whole thing down for you, explains it. This one had a de uh, encoded item. We decoded it offline. Now that's even more complicated. What the heck does it mean? Well, go ask it. It'll tell you every single piece of it and break it down. So the challenges we've had on learning knowledge, kind of up-leveling people, we now have very specific examples we can walk through and leverage. Proprietary product rules. Okay, if you've ever used the Awake NDR equipment, we, uh, we have custom rules written on a pr appliance that was dedicated for network detection response. Looks like this. So what we did, we type it in and we tell it things like, contains can be interpreted as a double equals in our logic. So we gave it the structure and lo and behold, this is one we're pointing to the Python code at GitHub. Said write us our rule set on that. Comes back with Claude, got pretty close. We gave it a couple more examples and what it ends up kicking out, this type of rule. This is the real one, this is the one that came back. Now, it looks like a lot more, but I'm gonna tell you the only difference is one's kind of a localized detection where one's a global detection. So we actually would end up removing some of these fields out of here for ours, we wouldn't need it. And in that case, we're able to basically take the majority of context here, train it a little bit further, and you can get the rule to almost 90% accuracy. Whereas these things take four to six hours to write internally. And we're writing the majority of it in about 30 seconds now. So massive improvements if you got proprietary rule sets, SQL queries, things like that. Now let's talk about leveraging data. So from a data perspective, like how many people are scraping data for different purposes off the internet for investigation and things like that? Anyone? Yeah, it's, it's quite time consuming. You're trying to find the right resources. I'm gonna tell you some real interesting tricks as well as what we're doing today. So this is a prompt that says, you're a domain IOC processing AI. I want you to extract a list and basically deduplicate, remove all the funny things out of the document and everything. First time you do this, it's gonna come back and tell you, you can't paste that much information inside my chat. So uh, just be aware of that. You gotta chunk this up sometimes. And what comes out of it? Perfect list for you. So those are very solid prompts to do things. I'm gonna give you an example of that. This week in DFIR, one of the things we're doing that I'm not necessarily got slides about, 17,000 blog posts on it of every single attack that's happened in the last several years. Scraped the entire website, ripped out everything off of it for our local database, okay? So pretty significant if you're looking to train on real attacks. You're running cases that you need to respond to people. We have all the attack data now. The AI is actually smarter than our analysts in terms of what it can reply. Now, IOCs, same thing. You can even take table format, just like this. Just grab it, throw it in with the right prompt. It will kick it out just like that. So you're now scrubbing different data sets across the board. As you get better, you'll learn, you create code underneath, you reach out, you grab this stuff, you pull it down and you structure it in different ways. All right, MITRE data. So this is an example where we use MITRE, um, the MITRE attack data. They've got a JSON file with their entire structure out there on the internet. So what we did is we wrote some Python code, used the AI, extracted every single bit of it out of the JSON file, formatted it in different ways, wrote some scripts to kind of play with it however we want. We also pulled down the entire MITRE data extract of all the actors, put it into our local repository for stuff so that now we're able to map all the MITRE stuff with all 17,000 articles from the blog post, which gives us very accurate attacks with MITRE mappings, and now we can apply that to our case data next. So it gives you an idea of how you start leveraging sources that are already built out there and also have good structured data that you can just rip down and deal with. All right, prompt superpowers. How many people here struggle with prompts? Yeah, they all seem like you're trying to ask Google, it's too simple, okay? In another version of this, I have a 55 line prompt just to try to show people an example. Prompts are not one to two lines, okay? They are 50, 60 lines in many cases to do what you need to do out of it. And in reality, the, once you get to that step, you start learning you need to combine both code and prompts to get forward, okay? And there are ways you can use the AI to teach you to code. But for prompt superpowers, if you don't know what to do, take a picture of this, you can write it, whatever. I want you to become my prompt engineer. Your goal is to help me craft the best possible prompts for my needs. 
So this will help you create your prompt, OK? No joke. And you can start to tailor this, too, because as the AIs change, some of the stuff, uh, certain words will make it better or worse. This is a base one I've used a lot. Ask me what the prompt should be about. You will need to improve it. You tell the AI it needs to improve it, so it knows it's got to also improve it with things you add to it. And then based on your input, you're going to generate you know, questions and things like that to refine it. So it will go through the process of actually creating you a prompt. So really good to get you moving if you're not used to it. Uh, we've actually now got interfaces where we have our, our analysts drop their prompt into our uh, internal online prompt creator, and it <laughs> redoes the prompt for you and makes it better so that like we've kind of got it to a point where we just uplift their entire prompts so that they don't have to think about it anymore. It's a similar type of stuff. All right, tabletops. How many people pay a lot of money for tabletops or spend a lot of time creating them, right? So this is a tabletop bot. You can go to po.com. Po, so what is Po? Po is an app you can use on your phone. You can use up top. You can create bots on it. It has every single AI engine in it, so I use it a lot because I can just select between AI engines. This bot is up there. It's for dynamic tabletops, okay? Sometimes, depending on which AI engine I'm using, it's better or worse, but uh, you can absolutely go through the entire tabletop process. So here, I've given it a scenario. Firewall compromise leading to ransomware in the industry healthcare. All I ask it for is two things, scenario and industry. You put it in, it'll start your tabletop drill. So instead of doing it once a year, just go sit with five people and do them every week. Start to learn the scenarios. Okay, what's great? Gives you a tabletop, says scenario overview, events and injects, countermeasures in place, forensic evidence, log data shows multiple failed login attempts. What are your options? Hey, I want to ask it, what's the log data look like? Can you display me the log data? Here's a sample of the log data. So you can ask it random questions just like you would in a normal tabletop. It's going to kick out the data for you. Okay, sometimes it will hallucinate with that stuff. So uh, that stuff is the AI gets better, that will uh, start to fine tune a little bit more. We're probably going to look at a code combination AI version of this, which will clean a lot of that up um, with the attack data we have. Here's another one. Can you provide me more details about unauthorized query attempts? So it's showing you the database logs, command line arguments, you know, SVC hosts, it gives you the command line with actual like attack stuff, network traffic capture. So pretty good at giving you similar stuff that you would see on a normal tabletop and get you to kind of walk through the scenarios on it. All right, quick wrap up. I know we're about out of time. So some of the references you can use here. Uh, Poe is one of the major items I use, but these are some key sites to give you different prompt engineering stuff. You know, um, like I was saying, what we're doing internally, some of the things I didn't mention, we've scraped a lot of stuff. We're at the point where we have automated a number of our analyst cases and responses to the point of we have the AI summarize, we have the AI determine if it's good or bad, and then we have the AI give the countermeasures to it. They're fully automated, being sent. We have not told anyone we're doing it. We haven't had no complaints on the output from them yet. And that's how we're basically testing it. We're trying to see, let's see what the customers think like that. We've shifted the resources from auditing AI stuff instead of doing cases now. So instead of you doing cases, senior people are now auditing the AI content, make sure it's actually coming through right. Some of the problems people don't understand is if you're hitting an API and pulling back data, if you actually get an error, it's going to put the error into that response. That's something more complicated people don't talk about. So we've kind of been dealing with rails and guards to deal with that stuff so that the data coming out that's automized, or, uh, automated, is accurate and going through. So we're constantly trying to implement this stuff. We're, uh, we're targeting to have about 50 use cases through our SOC, completely automated, completely AI, no analysts involved other than auditing them at that point. So hopefully this was good. Um, I got a couple, I think, the seconds or whatever for questions. Anything I can help answer? Was it good, bad? You guys like it? Yeah? Awesome. All right, so I'm available right over here at Arista's booth. Um, like I said, I do both internal and external type of security stuff, so happy to just have an interesting discussion or answer anything on here um, on LinkedIn or any of that. I don't know if Hims gives up the presentation, but I'm happy to send it to you. So uh, just reach out to me and uh, give me a day or so, and I'll get it back to you for sure. All right, thanks, everyone.